Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Today I'm going to put together a 27,000 watt load. So I'll take you through the entire process, and in the end, we'll test it out and see how well it does, see how much heat it creates. Let's get started. Here are the plans for the heater fans. So I've got five of these orange versions, and they only had five, and I have uh, an older uh, white heater fan that looks like this, or cream colored heater fan just kicking around. So supposedly they're all 4,850 watts each. All right, so uh, whether they are or not, we're gonna be safe and rate them at 4,500 watts. How does that sound? So 4,500 watts times six fans is 27,000 watts. And that's basically taken up by these heater coils right here. The little induction motor in the back is basically drawing nothing compared to this thing. Basically what these things are, whenever you look at a fan or any type of electric heater like this, you can look at it as a big air-cooled resistor. That's what this thing is, these big nichrome coils here, just a big resistor and a fan that's cooling them off. Now, I need to be able to control all of these fans individually or be able to turn them all on at once or all on in clusters. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a bunch of switches. So I'm going to need to turn on the current to this large plug with this very teeny little switch. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do that with a device called a solid state relay. So basically, solid state relays are a triac and an opto and a block, whether they've gone fancy into zero cross. Uh, I couldn't tell you in this case, but uh, that's really what these things are. Now, this is supposedly rated at 60 amps. Now, if we look at the backside here, here's something interesting. You kind of see that little imprint there? You see that as I rotate that? A little screw right there. Are you picturing what I'm picturing? Looks like maybe a TO220 package or something like that screwed to the back of this. And if we're lucky, maybe TO3PJ or something like that. Anyways, that would be the triac side. So that would be this side here. That's the side that controls the load. And then we'd have an opto. And then on this side here, we turn on the emitter side of the opto. So it'll take between three or 32 volts that you can supply to this side, basically very low current. It turns on an opto isolator, which tells the triac to turn on. And then of course this controls our, you know, the current to the fan on this side. Supposedly, there's a little indicator LED in there. We'll find out if there is. Uh, we really don't know if there is or even if this will hold up to 60 amps. But this will only have to control roughly 20 amps. So I figured, you know, at 60 amps, we should at least have that safety margin, right? They do have quite a bit of weight to them, but, you know, again, who really knows, right? So... Because it'll take 3 to 32 volts on this side, there's obviously some form of current limiting on this side to protect the opto. And there's always drop across triacs, right? So uh, whenever you have drop across a device, it, you know, we have dissipation, right? It's going to get hot. So it's not like a normal contactor, like a relay contactor, where you have contacts that go click and they close and there's very low resistance. Anytime you have drop across a device, you can look at that like resistance. And of course, resistance is like what this heater is doing, right? It creates heat. So that's the reason that they have the little device in here bolted to this piece of metal. It's obviously supposed to be heat sunk to something. So what we're going to do is screw this down to a scrap piece of aluminum or something like that. I figure, you know, at 20, at 20 amps of, of current control on this side, it should be absolutely fine. It might get mildly warm or something like that. So. so anyways, I have six of these things, which will control six of those things. And uh, of course, there's all of these switches. Now, the switches themselves, I want to, again, want to be able to control these in a, in a bank or all together. So what I'll do is I'll have a master switch here. And this master switch will control all three of these switches. And I'll have two separate sides. So basically... I, if I turn the master on, I can turn on each fan individually. Of course, the, these are turning on the, the relays and the relays are turning on the fans, right? So I can turn these all on individually or if I want, I can leave all three fans on and turn them all off and all on at the same time with one master switch. So what that'll allow me to do is say have three fans loading the actual generator Right, and then I can turn on another two here and then turn on another two at the same time. So I can have it preloaded and then add load, or I can shut them all off and then turn on all the load at the same time by turning you know, the two switches on here. And I, I have all of these different combinations that I can experiment with to see how the generator will react under different load variation. So I figure that would probably be the best thing to do. I'll probably put it into this project box here, just these little um, switches here 
These will be mounted externally close to some plugs down on the main board here and I'll have an umbilical cord run from this so I can turn everything on individually on this box. I can fit a battery in here. The battery will power up the emitter side of these optos. I figure that should, uh, should do the trick. Well, I've already switched the box out. The other box was too small. I figured I'd like some more space so I can flip the toggles a little easier. The other way it would have been a little bit too cramped and to fit the battery in there with everything. I also figure I'm going to add some LEDs to the box. Now, I've had these things kicking around forever. I got these in an estate sale and I've never really done anything with them. So I figure now is the perfect opportunity to use these little pre-made LEDs up. So basically there'll be one LED above each switch to indicate if I've left a switch on. Of course, the switches are kind of a silvery color and the box is a silvery color, so I can see that easily happening. So a nice little glowing LED will indicate when one of the switches is on right here, in addition to the little LED that's supposedly in one of those solid state relays, which we'll find that out here soon. So what I'm going to do is center punch these. I made a little legend and I'll just center punch all of this and pre-drill these and fit the LEDs and all the switches into this Hammond box. It's a spring-loaded center punch right here. These are very handy to have. So basically what you do is you just, as you can see here, there's a bunch of little holes in the center of each one of these little dots. So basically all you do is you align the center of the center punch to it, and then you give it a push straight down like so, and it goes click just like that. And then you get a nice little mark right in the center of the, uh, center a little dot right there. So then what I'll do is I'll take a very small drill bit and I'll pre-drill all of those little center punch marks. The reason I use a small drill bit is so it won't wander out of the little punch mark. If you, if the cutting edge of the bit is too large, you know, it really doesn't matter if you center punch then, right? So I pre-drill with a small bit, that way it'll guide it through. And then from the small bit, I work my way up to the next bit that'll actually be the appropriate size. All right, they're all center punched. Now, just to drill out all the holes. Now it's ready for the actual size.
The switch box is now complete. I use some CAT5E cable that will run down to the opto isolator side of those solid state relays. So the box itself is completely isolated from this cable, from the switches, from the LEDs, from the battery, everything. So basically this box is floating and I wanted that as one extra step of protection. Now the solid state relays themselves are isolated so the 240 volt side is isolated from the switch side, but this is just one extra step of precaution. So completely isolated on this side here. On the back side, this is what the wiring looks like. It looks like quite a bit of work in there. Eh, it took about an hour to put this together, maybe a little over an hour. Not too bad to wire all of that up. And it's a pretty straightforward circuit, so I'll just uh, put this battery pack on here and we'll take a look at how it works. So, say I want to turn on this side here. What I can do is I can apply each load individually, or I can shut them all off at once, or turn them all on at once. And I can do the same with this side here. So say I wanted to run three loads and say after it's been running for a while, I immediately want to add another two loads. So what I would do is turn these two on, and now they're ready to go when I push this switch up here. So you can see this, try to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what's going on. So immediately add another two loads, and then I can add in the sixth one if I like. I can turn them all off individually, and I can turn them all on individually, and I can shut them all off with just two switches, just like so. And if I want to apply all six loads all at the same time, I can just turn both switches on at the same time. Okay, here's the plan for the generator side of things. So the generator will come into these two posts, and these two posts here will break off into the relays and the sockets. So I picked up a whole bunch of these lugs right here. As you can see, they hold some pretty big wiring. And there's two of them together on the top of this porcelain standoff. Now these standoffs come out of big old transmitters and they're used to having KV across them so they're absolutely fine. So these will be tightened together with this nut here so it'll make these nice and tight. There'll be a nice good current uh, you know, passage through this, no problems. And then this will just be threaded somewhat tight into the, into the actual ceramic insulator because I don't want to damage the insulator. So these will stand up over here. And then the solid state relays will bolt to this big chunk of aluminum that I found. It's a piece of scrap aluminum that I've got kicking around. It'd be awfully hard in any length of time for these things to heat that whole thing right up. This will be 
also stood off the surface. So I figure what I'm going to do, since this is just a mock-up of everything, I'll probably put this on a piece of plywood for now, screw everything down to a piece of plywood, see how it all works. And then in the end, what I'll end up doing is transferring this into a very large project box. So this will just be the trial for this to see how this all works. I have a feeling it'll work just fine, but uh, it'll be a nice little trial and it'll allow us to see everything working and everything at the same time. So don't try this at home. This is definitely not a final device. When this thing is done, it'll be all shielded and everything like that. So this here, are, this is the plug for all of these units. So I'll have six of these things probably stretched across here. And these are the relays that will control it. So basically, there'll be the wires that lead off to the socket, directly from the socket, from this uh, connection here to the socket, and then from the socket back to the relay, and then from the other side of the relay back to this post here. And then these will all be turned on by that little box. So this here is the uh, 240 volt side, and this here is the, the low voltage side. So the low voltage side is the side that gets switched by that little box, completely isolated from the, from the high voltage side. Another reason that I like to test this out on wood first is that it is a, a nice insulator. I don't want to put this all down and bolt this all to any type of a solid metal case at this point here. I want to get everything all worked out. And not only that, there, I didn't put any RFI or EMI protection inside that box because I wanted to keep that box completely isolated. So I may need to add some down here. I'm not sure, which will just be bypass caps. If I do that, I'll tell you all about that when I do that. It just depends on how the unit operates. I think it'll be fine on its own. There might even be a little bit of uh, EMI RFI protection in these devices. I don't know. Again, down the road, we're going to crack one of these things open and uh, we'll look inside and see what they've actually done to... Uh, try to control 60 amps worth with uh, that small little package we were talking about there. So I'll clean this thing up. Probably I just either wire brush this or whatever, clean this all up because it's pretty dirty. And I'll get all of this stuff all mounted and uh, attached to the generator and we'll try it up. Oh, another thing, this is the wire I'm going to use is 10 gauge. And these are the only two colors that they had. So I am going to be using black and green instead of black and red. So don't mind the colors. The color, usually green is earth, right? So that'll be the return line on here. And then of course black is usually hot, which it'll be here, which is absolutely fine. So uh, don't mind coloring. Coloring is just coloring anyways. But um, yeah, so that's, that's all they had. So this is what I'll be using here to color code things on this and uh, make things a little bit easier to follow. So that's nice and smooth, actually very, very smooth. So that'll work nice for the heat sink side of those solid state relays.
I'm getting ready to wire this whole thing up now. Everything is all mounted and nice and sturdy on here. I can lift this up by these two little porcelain insulators. So um, I also added a tap for neutral phase, just in case I want to say, add maybe two incandescent 120 volt light bulbs on each side. They're a very good indication of when you apply a load and then of course click a load off. You can watch the result of the bulbs as the, uh, as the generator is trying to stabilize. So sometimes, depending on the generator, of course, if the governor doesn't act fast enough or depending on the regulation of the particular generator, you can, you'll sometimes see them brighten up for a moment, come down again, or they'll dim out and then come back up again. So it's a really good indication of how good the regulation is. Something as simple as an incandescent bulb. And you wanna know, uh, lately I've bought these LEDs, uh, LED bulbs, which are absolutely horrible for sensing any type of voltage dip. So, of course, they're designed to be dimmed. So you, you attach them to, uh, you know, just a standard type of dimmer and you dim them out. And But any type of line variation, you can see it in the actual bulb. So even those new horrible bulbs may have a really good purpose here. This would probably really, I guess you could say, amplify the effect if there's uh, any sag or over voltage or anything like that. So I'll probably end up adding those over here in the future. I'm not gonna do that now. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just wiring everything up. So putting wires in the back here and uh, crimping on these connectors. Now, there is something that's kind of interesting about these connectors and a lot of people really don't know this. In order to crimp these things, pardon the bump of the tripod there, in order to crimp these things correctly, I'll move this around, you can see how this has this little dimple in the center, and it is actually quite a large dimple. It goes for quite a ways. You can see this here. See how far that goes across there? So what happens is you can see a very heavy pair of pliers, right? Very, very heavy. So with these particular types of connectors, what they do is they have a split in the top of them. And this dimple that you see right here looking at this in a viewfinder, so pardon the fumbling. So this little dimple that you see right there should be placed directly on top of the split. So when you pinch these together, what it does is the wire is inside this. So you, you put the wire in here and what it does is when you, when you pinch it, it squeezes them down like this and it holds them really tight. And if you look at this, it's exactly what happens. Hopefully you can see that in the end there. See how that pinches that down like so? And that's how it should look. And that's a nice clean, I guess you could say crimp right there. Very, very tight. That would never come apart. So that's what they're supposed to look like. I know a lot of people, they don't realize that and they buy these crimpers that don't even have that. It's just basically two ovals. You want to avoid those if you're ever using these type of connectors. You definitely want the crimper with the dimple. The test unit is done and ready to load down a generator. So I've noticed, so I'll turn this on here and I'll turn on the first one here, which is this one right here. They do have LEDs in them. I've noticed that two of the blocks have dimmer LEDs than the rest. So this one here has got a, a dimmer LED inside. Now the next one is normal. I'll turn on the next bank here. So this one here now, the next one, and then the last one is another dim one. So I don't know if they've changed the current limiting resistor in line with the LEDs or maybe just a different series of LED or something like that. I measured the current on this side and they all draw about 10 to 11 milliamps on this one side. So, you know, not too bad. So I really don't know why they are a little bit dimmer. I'll switch this back down here. But it is ready to go. All the wiring harnesses are all attached. So this will attach to the generator here and all the fans will plug in here. So let's go load that thing down and see what it does. Number four, extension cord. I cannot tell you how incredibly heavy just a piece of this cabling is. Uh, taking the ends off this wiring, basically stripping the wiring, is like trying to peel a car tire. So I think it took 15 minutes just to do that one piece. I grab a piece of the... Uh, grab a piece of this if you can see that. Very difficult stuff to... Uh, Move the focus up here. Very difficult stuff to 
it's like a garden hose. Anyways, so that's ready to go. It's wired into the generator. So now all I need to do is connect those to the test platform here and uh, plug in a bunch of heaters. So grab the heaters here. So here's a heater here. And basically, one cord there. And the next air cooled resistor here. 27,000 watts of resistive fun derated. It's probably more than 27,000 watts, but uh, we'll just say that to be safe. My attempt to try and bring a summer day to this area. All right, so I have to put the three wires in here. Now, I've never actually tested the actual L1, L2 and neutral inside this generator before because I've never actually pulled any current from it. So I'm just using what it says in the block somebody's drawn on there. And there's also current sensing donuts inside the generator that this wire had to run through when I wired it. So uh, as you can see, very freshly, uh, let's see where the, uh, hopefully the focus is in the center screen here. So very freshly uh, peeled wires, I guess you could say. So anyways, so I don't really have anything, any neutral hookup on this thing. I'm just putting this on here so I can test this with a voltmeter to make sure that this is neutral. So this is the first time any current has ever been drawn from this generator. So you'll witness that with me right here. So I'll just tighten all of these in here. And uh, this is closer to this side, and this one is closer to this side. It really doesn't matter. So, the connections inside the generator, these little blocks right here that I'm tightening into, I can stick my entire finger into them. So, they're that big. These are small, tiny in comparison to what's inside that generator housing. No kidding, these things are like this. Probably like that, just massive blocks. And they have a Torx head on the uh, top of them. They don't have a flat kind of screw. So obviously designed for uh, a lot of current. And I want to make sure that those are nice and tight. This one really isn't that important. So I'll test this with my voltmeter. There should be 240 across this and then there should be 120 to these two and then 120 to these two here. So there we go. All wired up and ready to go. So I'll get the generator started. Now when the generator is running, I'm going to be using hand signals because it's so incredibly loud in here. I have hearing protection on it. So incredibly loud that uh, it even swamps the mic that's strapped right to me right here. It's, I, you can't even hear me. So I'll just use hand signals, you know, if something's good, I'll give you a thumbs up. And if something isn't, I'll give it a thumbs down, right? So, so I'll let you know like that. And, uh, or maybe I'll walk outside the shop and shut the door because outside the shop, it's a complete world of difference. Outside the shop, you can hardly hear the generator. Inside the shop, you can hear nothing but the generator. So uh, just, you know, night and day difference. Okay, let's give this thing a preliminary test. We should get about 20 amps of fan, something like that. And uh, this is the voltage that will be across these two and to neutral. So I'll try and stay out of the way here so I can show you all of this. Kind of hard to keep this all in frame. So I'll turn these all on one by one to make sure every one of these solid state relays is working. Cause remember we had some dim ones. So uh, I don't know what that's about. So uh, let's try this together. I gotta tell you, I'm a bit nervous about these blocks. That's about it. Because if one of the blocks isn't working or if those two that were dim aren't working, it kind of throws this test off. I'll have to order some new ones. So anyways, let's uh, hope for the best. So I have the generator warmed up already and everything is connected, but nothing has been tried because we're going to experience this together. And if it's a failure, it's a failure. All right, so here we go. 
I'm probably talking really loud because I have hearing protection on. Okay, so it's preheating now, so it's going to start. So this will be the end of my talking because you won't hear me. I won't hear me. Here's a view of everything running. I'll start each individual fan. So here we go. Again, I'll 
just make hand signals because it's going to get mighty loud. And it's preheating. It's like a summer day in here. Did you know I've released another invention on Patreon? So for those of you that have been around here for a while, you probably know about the Carlson Super Probe. Well, even if you've been on the internet for a while, it's all over the internet. People have been building their own versions of the Super Probe. Well, now I've released the Ultra Probe on Patreon with all the files, even the artwork for the box, all explicit, uh, build instructions and everything to put this thing together. To give you an example of how sensitive the Ultra Probe is, is it will listen to music in your body from a distance away. I've also shown this on Patreon as well, and I'll show that here on this channel coming up very shortly. So if you want the ultimate troubleshooting tool, very sensitive to listen to noise and components, you can even listen to noise in bearings. So if you have mechanical noise coming from somewhere, it'll even help you narrow that down. That's how incredibly sensitive this device is. Very, very neat tool for the bench and you can build one yourself. There's lots and lots of plans. Everything is up there. There's a whole series of videos on how to put this thing together. So if you're not there, you're missing out, definitely check out Patreon. It's all up there. I have an ongoing electronics course there where I share my designs and inventions and I share my electronics knowledge there as well. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. If you enjoy the videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. Until next time, take care. Hope you enjoyed. Bye for now.